My name is Lucy Norville, and I coordinate programming and communications for the Scarborough Public Library. And I want to welcome everybody today to Let's Talk Scarborough. Today, uh, Sam Kelly, who facilitates our civil discourse group at the library, which is called Let's Talk America, will interview the, the new chief of police here in Scarborough. And Sam has lots of questions that I think will help us all get a little more acquainted with uh, the chief. Uh, first, you may not have, have been in the meeting yet. You may still have been in the waiting room when I mentioned that we are recording today. So if you don't wanna be recorded, you can turn your, your camera off. Uh, the first thing that we will do is um, listen to the new land acknowledgement for the Scarborough Public Library. The Scarborough Public Library acknowledges that it is located in the traditional homeland, past and present, of tribes in the Wabanaki Confederacy. We recognize and honor the current tribes who comprise the Confederacy, the Penobscot, the Passamaquoddy, the Maliseets, and the Mi'kmaq, who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. We acknowledge the Owaskoag people who once lived in what is now Scarborough. We respect the traditional values of these tribes and support their efforts for land and water protection and restoration. In offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm Indigenous sovereignty, history, and experiences. So the first thing I would like to do is welcome any of you who have joined us most recently and introduce Sam Kelly uh, to you all. Sam has been the facilitator of the library's civil discourse uh, um, forum called Let's Talk America for about 15 years. And this program grew out of that one. So I was actually present when the group um, discussed having a, um, inviting a um, town official to, uh, to a program to learn more about um, the official and that person's work. And it took us about uh, maybe two seconds or three. Um, it was unanimous that people wanted to meet the new uh, chief of police in Scarborough. So uh, in, in an experimental way, Sam was able to reach out to the chief and he agreed to come and, and talk to you all today. And Sam, the last thing I'll let you know about him is um, Sam's been living in Scarborough for more than 40 years. And back in the day, he had a similar show. Um, this one was to feature what was happening with the town council. And he went uh, to the middle school, picked up video equipment, filmed the town council, and then held a program on cable television called the Friday Forum, which included people calling in with their questions. So today it's a different format, uh, but the same kind of idea. So we're, we're very excited to welcome both uh, Sam Kelly and Chief Mark Holmquist today. Again, uh, welcome to Let's Talk Scarborough. And my name is my name is Sam Kelly, and uh, thank you for um, listening in today. And our first guest uh, for this program is our new police chief, Mark Holmquist, um, who is now the chief of uh, Scarborough Police uh, since December sixth. And uh, want to welcome you, uh, Chief, and thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, welcome to Scarborough. And, um, you know, you're coming in and taking over this job after Robbie Moulton, who was here, I think, 40, 44 years or something like that. So it's quite, a, quite an achievement to, to do that. And uh, just want to get some background on it, if you, if you might. Uh, where did you grow up anyways, Chief? Well, thanks for having me, Sam. And, and Lucy, thank you for organizing this as well um, on your end. Um, 
And thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm um, glad to see it's not just the three of us uh, <laughs> Zooming with each other, but uh, there are more people out there that uh, are taking an interest in town government here in Scarborough and specifically with uh, Scarborough PD. So uh, to answer your question, sir, uh, I grew up in the, the town of Caribou, which is a, a small uh, city um, in Aroostook County, uh, just north of Presque Isle. What did you do after high school? Uh, after high school, I uh, graduated in 1991, and a month later, I found myself in uh, basic training for the United States Army at Fort Benning, Georgia, um, home of the infantry. Uh, I spent uh, you know, three months there in my basic and advanced training, and then uh, after I received my training, I was uh, assigned to a, a regular Army unit. Called the Old Guard. It's the Third United States Infantry Regiment out of Fort Myer, Virginia. Well, we have a similar background. I was also at Fort Benning <laughs> back in the late '60s, and uh, for OCS and jump school, you know, type mm -hmm. of thing. And uh, and then in Vietnam, I was with the Old Guard, like yourself. You were with the Old mm -hmm. Guard, yes, and uh, which is a pretty interesting. Uh, uh, one thing I did notice in your uh, resume was that you were a sentinel at the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington National Cemetery, which to me is one of the holiest places in the United States. It really, even just saying that, I get emotional about it, you know, type of thing. But you served as a, as a guard at the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier? I did. I, uh, my last 14 months in the Old Guard, I was assigned as a sentinel at the Tomb of the Unknowns. And, and prior to that, um, I had nine months of duty uh, serving on a uh, firing party team, um, doing you know funerals uh, within the military district of Washington, but more specifically at Arlington National Cemetery. Um, we did uh, you know veterans funerals all the way up to you know four star general uh, funerals was was the highest ranking official that I ever uh, um, you know was attached to that funeral detail. So. Um, you know, a lot of pressure for uh, an 18, 19 year old kid from Caribou, Maine, uh, but that was only to prepare me for what was to come as a sentinel at the Tomb of the Unknowns. It, you know, uh, and everything done there uh, was to the standard of perfection, and that uh, standard of perfection was something that was um, listed in line six of our Sentinel's Creed, which which indicates my standard will remain perfection, and, you know, truly we all know that uh, you can never reach that standard of, of uh, perfection, but uh, for Sentinels, um, it is our goal to strive to get as close to perfection each and every day, um, not for ourselves, but for the uh, four unknowns that were buried there at that time. Well, it's quite a story it really was. And so how many years did you spend in the Army or the Reserves, or et cetera? So a combination of active duty, uh, as well as Maine Army National Guard, and, uh, and then to finish up with the, uh, the Army Reserves, I spent 25 years total in service. Yes. And when did you go into the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Maine State Police? Yeah, Maine State Police. I enlisted in the Maine State Police a month after graduating from University of Maine at Presque Isle. Um, a month later, I was uh, uh, assigned to a, a training troop in the state police, and uh, I received my academy training at, at the, the old academy in Waterville, Maine. Mm -hmm. Did you travel all over the state of Maine, different uh, locations, or did you operate out of one place? Yeah, so I, uh, once I graduated from the academy in December of 1997, I was assigned to Troop A, which is uh, in the town of Alfred in York County. Uh, where I spent the first 11 years of my career there. Wow. So how, so then you, um, how, the Scarborough police job came open. Uh, was that the first time you would applied for a job outside of the state police? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I uh, have been actually some time since I had even had to worry about a resume. I don't think I even submitted a resume when I applied for the state police. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so the, with the help of my wife, who is on this, uh, this program as well, she, uh, she was able to get my resume um, uh, up to standard and, uh, you know, and cover letter and, and, and was able to send it over to town hall and, 
and uh, here I am. So <laughs> she set me up for success for sure. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be talking to her shortly. We'll get the rest of the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you will. Uh, and uh, I did happen to see you today's paper that the uh, Deputy Chief O'Malley has uh, decided to retire. Yes, he has after 29 years, and um, it'll be a you know a huge loss for our department. Uh, but we feel so good for John and his his family. Uh, he's been a dedicated servant uh, to the Scarborough Police Department as well as the citizens here in Scarborough uh, for, as I said, 29 years, and. Um, He's a, he's a type of leader that uh, a lot of our, our young leaders that we have here, our lieutenants and sergeants, um, they look up to as a mentor. And I had the chance before taking this chief's position uh, four or five years ago to sit on a, a promotional board for a patrol sergeant. And um, um, just hearing the, the people come through who were looking to be promoted uh, into that sergeant's position uh, a lot of them mentioned John O'Malley's name as being one of the reasons why they wanted to become a, a leader for the Scarborough Police Department and um, thought of him as a mentor and, and somebody that uh, they, they definitely uh, took a lot from their conversations with him over the years and the, and the time that he took with them uh, to show them uh, exactly what they need to do, not only as police officers, but as future leaders. So anytime uh, somebody with, with that amount of experience who brings um, that amount of positive impact to an agency, uh, when, when they decide to leave the agency, it's a, it's a, it's a huge loss just as, you know, when chief Bolton left, um, you know, it's there, there's going to be huge expectations for whoever takes over uh, in those positions. Um, I feel those expectations every day. I, I realize that, you know, I'm, I'm following someone who, who had a huge impact just as John O'Malley did. Um, in this community, and, and it'll be the same thing for, for John's replacement as well. Sure, yeah. I guess we can uh, open the questions up there uh, to anybody, Lucy, that uh, would like to ask questions. Or... Sure. Um, let me say a couple of, of things about how uh, we'd like that to work. Uh, first of all, if you'd like to ask a question yourself, um, and uh, unmute yourself. Uh, just please type your name into the into the chat, and I'll um, I'll call your name, um, and you can ask your own question. And if you would prefer that I ask a question for you, you can actually type just a question into the chat, and we'll um, we will ask um, that. Um, so it's, it's entirely up to you. Um, if you have not used Zoom a lot, um, on the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little um, speech bubble that is the chat. And if you click on that, you can, you can type um, your question in there. I did have one question um, for you, Chief, about uh, curious, since you, you've been working um, just shy of two months now, so not, not too many um, days on the job, couple, couple months on the job, but I'm, I'm curious about what your, what your most um, unusual day has involved so far in the Scarborough Police Force. Uh... I don't know if I've had any unusual days yet compared to um, some of the days that I had with the state police, more specifically with the major crimes unit. Uh, you never, you never knew um, from day to day what was going to happen or where you're going to end up. And, and I, I go back to, you know, my days as a young trooper too. One of the, um, the most exciting things that um, I had to look forward to every day was, you know, once you left your driveway, you never knew, uh, what you were going to and when it was all going to happen and what time you were going to get home. So uh, although that may seem unpredictable for some, it's, uh, it's you know, it's a, an exciting way of life for others. And, and that continues here with this job, although it, I, I don't foresee myself getting into uh, into the action uh, as much as I probably would want to. But um, uh, there will be days when I, I get to leave the office and get out into the field, which 
uh, will probably be, you know, bring the biggest smile to my face when I'm able to do that. So, um, but yeah, just, uh, I, I think the biggest challenge for me so far is, is learning the role of a, of a chief and, um, and knowing that I have a lot of, uh, a lot of leaders who uh, serve with me that uh, are, have already established this agency as, as one of the premier agencies in the state of Maine. And, I knew that coming into this uh, into this uh, department that it was uh, a well-oiled machine, and um, you know, when you recognize that as a leader, that you're coming into a very good situation. The challenge is, is not only to maintain that momentum that you've you've been able to, or the team that's in place already has been able to establish. Uh, not only do you want to uh, main, maintain the mom that momentum, but you also want to build upon that and uh, build upon the system the success of a, of a chief Moulton and his team. Uh, so that's been kind of the resounding theme that I've had for the last couple months is, all right, what have we done right over the, over the course of the last several years? And then not only what have we done right, but how can we get better at doing those things and refine those things and, and make things more efficient so that we can better serve uh, not only the people that work for our department, but also the people that they serve in the community. Wonderful, thank you. We've got three questions that are coming um, now. And we'll do a little something that we do in Let's Talk America. Um, the order of them are um, Judy um, and then Carl um, and then Betty. And there's another question that's been asked in the chat after that. So we've actually got four questions so far lined up. Well, um, congratulations, Chief Holmquist. It's very nice to meet you. One of the things that I used to do in New York State was teach a course in police community relations in, um, in uh, community college. And um, I always love to see this kind of dialogue. I think it's very important. Then I have a personal question. I was called by my bank uh, about a week ago and they suggested that I uh, put some of my checking account into a savings account because they said there had been uh, a, a crime spree at the post office and that checks were being stolen and uh, whited out and then made for a certain amount. And um, I wondered, I mean, I may have missed that on the news. I didn't hear it. Um, I wondered what you could tell me about it and what's being done to, uh, to deal with that. Uh, thanks for your question and, and thank you for your welcome as well. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's been a case that um, since I've started here in, on December 6th, uh, it, uh, we've had a, a, a rash of uh, mail thefts uh, dating back to October, and it's not just our community, it's it's uh, several Southern Maine communities, and it extends into New Hampshire as well as Massachusetts. There's an active investigation going on right now, um, and we have uh, detectives assigned here with our agency that are working with our federal partners from the Postal Service um, to try to get, get some people held accountable for these actions. And so uh, if you had questions uh, regarding your phone call from the bank, I would encourage you to uh, um, stop into the bank if they're open uh, for service and just verify because there are other people trying to take advantage of folks over the phone as well. And anytime I get a call from uh, a financial institution or a so-called financial institution trying to do things uh, or get me to commit to doing things, uh, I always wanna uh, go the extra step and, and verify uh, the accuracy of that phone call by going in and talking to somebody in person. So I have done that and, yeah. and I did verify that. I guess my question at this point is, can I feel safer if I uh, deposit uh, a letter with a check in it at the post office itself? Is there more security there than there would be if I left it in my mailbox? What do you suggest? I suggest that you go into the lobby and, and put it into a uh, you know, into the, the reinforced mailbox within the lobby of the post office. Um, a lot of the uh, <clears throat> a lot of the thefts that we're seeing are from those blue mailboxes that are stationed you know, all around town. Um, and 
you know, the postal service is working on reinforcing those, those mailboxes, but there's uh, obviously some, you know, there's, there's a bunch of these uh, mailboxes that they have to uh, reinforce uh, throughout the new England region that, you know, we're, we've got a few States I've already mentioned them that are, that are being uh, victimized here um, citizens all throughout those States. So, uh, the, the Postal Service is working hard to, to reinforce uh, those mailboxes to make them more uh, secure um, for our citizens. But uh, I would encourage you uh, in the meantime to go in and, and put your mail into the, uh, the mailbox in the lobby. Because they weren't being stolen from the actual post office themselves? No, okay. right, that's correct. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you, Judy. Um, the next person to ask a question is Carl, and after Carl will be Betty. Ah, good afternoon, Chief. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yes, sir, I can. Uh, it's nice good to, to see, see you again. You. Yes, and welcome to Scarborough. Uh, my question is, uh, I, I'm very familiar with, with the exemplary career that you've had within the um, Maine State Police. And I'm curious uh, about what about the what but what about Scarborough as a community uh, attracted you to consider us as your next stop along the journey, sir? Thank you for your question. Um, one thing about uh, the the town of Scarborough that um, uh, attracted me to this position um, within the community itself, I I understand that uh, there's a there's a huge amount of support. You know, this is before I even came into this job. I, I recognize that the town of Scarborough and their citizens, um, you know, supported their police department. And, and the reasons why you, you can tell, um, you know, a department is supported by their, their, uh, their, their uh, citizens, you know, Scarborough PD is well-equipped. Um, the culture here within the police department is a good, strong culture, a positive culture. Okay, that says a lot about uh, the support that town government provides to our police department, as well as the citizens um, who support us day in and day out. Um, so, you know, I didn't see a lot of people leaving this department over the last 25 years. Every Scarborough police officer that I ever spoke to was happy about working here, um, happy about the level of support that they received. and that continues on in the conversations that I've had since taking over as chief, um, you know, police officers are happy to be working here. Um, and that's not always the case in all of our, you know, jurisdictions, whether it's in Maine or New England or, or uh, nationwide. Um, that's not always, um, unfortunately, not always the case. And we are so uh, lucky here and blessed uh, to have uh, uh, the support of the town. And, and one thing I, I, you know, told Sam that I wanted to talk about was our recent uh, community survey, where close to 93% of those surveyed um, recently uh, were in favor of, you know, what the police department, as well as uh, public safety as a whole, you know, our fire and EMS as a family, what we're doing here uh, as, a, as a team and what, what we're doing for our community. So 93%, and that's, uh, you know, almost double digit percentage points, you know, above any other um, survey that's that's been done nationwide. You know, the, the, the team that put the survey together uh, couldn't believe the numbers that they were seeing um, as town government as a whole and how people felt about uh, living in Scarborough. So um, it's not just one department that's doing it. It's the entire, um, the entire team here at, at the town of Scarborough. And we wouldn't be successful without the support of our community. And um, that really means a lot. And I hope that we always have it here and we, we strive hard uh, every day on the public safety side uh, to make sure that we uh, stay in the good graces of, of our citizens. And you know, we, we know that we are accountable to them each and every day. And, and we wanna to try to be as transparent as possible uh, to make sure that they're, uh, they're in the know about what they need to know on a, on a daily basis. Thank you so much. And again, uh, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. So, greetings and welcome. Again, we're 
very happy you're here and hope you enjoy it thoroughly the rest of your tenure. Um, my question is, what was one of the most interesting things that happened to you while you were at the tomb and in Arlington? Yeah, so thank you, uh, Betty. I, <laughs> I have not read the books yet. I've been a busy guy, but <laughs> I will get to that. Uh, Betty and Duncan actually have brought some books uh, about the history of Scarborough, um, I would say a month and a half ago now, and and uh, and Sam has given me a, a book to read as well. So I've got three, three or four books that I need to get to. No rush. I'll, I'll get to them. Um, so one of the one of the things that I share with every group that I talk about um, or talk to about um, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and, and my time there, uh, I talk about my bright and shining moment, and it's it's nothing that I did specifically at all. Um, but it was the impact that a, that a Vietnam veteran had um, not only on my outlook as a soldier, but as a citizen in our nation. Um, I was four months into, uh, you know, a, a six month training process at the tomb and thought I knew exactly why I, I, I was there as a sentinel, uh, obviously there for our four unknown soldiers, those soldiers who gave uh, and paid the ultimate sacrifice, not only in their lives, but their uh, giving their identities for our freedom. And that means a lot uh, to us Sentinels and as well as everybody who visits the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. But um, it was Veterans Day uh, or around about that time in 1992. And um, I was four months into training and I was uh, just posted as a Sentinel on the mat uh, for a, a midday walk. Um, and it was an hour long walk and, um, it had started to rain during the guard change and, um, the rain was coming down, um, almost sideways. Uh, I was only out there for a few minutes and I had a rain jacket on and my pant legs from my knees all the way down to my shoes, uh, soaked. I was soaked. Uh, I could feel the water coming into my shoes. It was that bad. So I knew that it was going to be a long hour uh, walk. But uh, as tomb guards, we pride ourselves in walking in all kinds of weather. And um, because we're there for the unknowns. Um, so anyway, I was outdoors walking in, in the driving rain and all the visitors had left after after the guard change. And um, I noticed a, a, a male coming up in, in a wheelchair. Um, his legs had been amputated and he had an American flag attached to his, the back of his wheelchair. And as he came up to the tomb, um, he faced the tomb and centered himself perfectly on the Vietnam unknown. Um, so as you look at the tomb, if you, you haven't been there, you have the large marble um, tombstone, which is the World War I unknown. Uh, and then you have the, the World War II Vietnam was in the middle and the Korean War unknown. So he centered himself right on the Vietnam unknown. And um, as I was observing him, I, I saw that he had a Vietnam veterans hat on. Um, the most impressive thing with him, I was in a raincoat and uh, dressed for the elements, but he was not, uh, mm. you know, short of having his hat on. Uh, he didn't have a jacket or anything like that on that would have protected him from the rain, but he was out there with me. And as I was walking back and forth, I could hear him sobbing. Um, so it's, it's not unusual to see people having an emotional moment, um, especially our, our veterans that come to uh, connect with the unknowns of uh, whichever war they are you know, affiliated with. So it wasn't anything out of the normal uh, to see or hear that. Walked by him a few times, and uh, <clears throat> one of my last times I, I walked past him, um, he saluted me, and he, uh, I could hear as he was crying, he said, thank you for uh, guarding my friend, for taking care of my friend. And at that moment, um, I realized exactly why I was there as a sentinel, um, exactly what my job was, and that veteran taught me more about honor and sacrifice than, um, than any of my trainers had done up to that point. Um, mm -hmm. Because that was raw, that was real to me. And 
Um, it was something that resonated with me at that moment. And it, it helped me in my career um, as a Sentinel, but also as a 25 year Army soldier. Um, I had a chance to share that with uh, many of the, the trainees that I had the opportunity to train as a drill sergeant in the United States Army. And um, every group that I get to talk to um, about the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and my service there, I bring up my bright and shining moment because uh, that truly was a gift that was provided to me by that Vietnam unknown. And, um, you know, I, I wish I could meet him today to, to thank him uh, because it, it hit home to me. And I know it has hit home to many people that I've been able to, uh, to reach out and share that, that story with. Um, it just shows the level of sacrifice, not only uh, with the unknowns, but also all of our veterans who either lost their lives um, during a time of war or the ones who are still living um, who, you know, go to the, like our Vietnam veterans who go to the Vietnam War Memorial um, and, you know, honor their friends that they lost overseas and, uh, and those that come to the tomb of the unknown soldier. Um, you know, it, it means a lot to those veterans and the families of, of those veterans who didn't come home. So. That's really special. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Um, next, Duncan has a question. Hi, Chief. Hi, sir. That, that, that's, that's so moving, I almost hesitate to ask the next question. Um, bringing us bringing us back to um, Scarborough, recognizing that you've only been in the job for a couple of months. Um, as, as you're looking at the town through whatever lenses you, you've managed to um, acquire so far, what do you think the biggest challenges are um, as um, a police department? And, and uh, as an ancillary question, what can we as citizens do to help you address those challenges? I think our biggest challenges um, here uh, specifically, are, you know, is the Scarborough, um, as you all know, being citizens here, um, you know, we're seeing an influx of uh, potential population, you know, within the next five to 10 years of people wanting to uh, relocate their businesses here or to live here. Um, so, we as a police department, as well as our partners on the fire side as well, we need to meet that need by um, being able to have the personnel and equipment necessary to, uh, to meet the demand that will be there. Um, we may not see it now, but I wanna be ahead of it so that when um, that call does come, that we are ready um, you know, to, to be able to uh, provide a level of service that our citizens, uh, are accustomed to. Uh, they've they've been accustomed to that as over the years of, of a high quality service and, and uh, you know an excellent response time from our officers and from our, our fire department as well and EMS. I want to make sure that we continue that. Um, so you know, I guess reach through your elected officials and um, through the council and you know uh, you know we're going to consistently uh, try to grow our department. Uh, as we feel is, is needed, uh, you know, through our personnel as, as well as making sure they have the, uh, the most up-to-date uh, training and equipment uh, that they need to do their jobs. Okay, thanks. The next question is coming from Wynn. Uh, uh, first off, Chief, um, thank you for your service and welcome, welcome, Dean. To, to this wonderful community. And I have to take my hat off for, for Sam, who has uh, just, just a wonderful person to keep this alive. And I'm very sorry for not being there, Sam, for the last a year or so because of the health issue. So I'm glad to be back. Uh, Chief, I have a few questions, uh, but before that, I want to uh, share with you some of the thoughts about DC. Our son was for a while uh, um, at the National Cathedral for uh, as a chief of the director rather of the uh, police there, uh, police and security there. So we have some you know, definite connection there. Thank you uh, again. Uh, I have three questions. 
the first one has to do with a comment uh, and question that Judy posed at the beginning regarding the uh, you know question about mail stolen and that kind of thing. Uh, is there a service or should there be a service where some question like that can be passed on to the general population in a way of uh, announcement or something perhaps coming either through um, you know, the police department or some other form? That's the first question. Um, the second question has to do with the reverse 911. In case of there is an, a real emergency that a citizen needs to be notified, do you currently already have or going to have some kind of uh, capability such as the reverse 911? And the third one has to do with uh, the question about the um, uh, something that I believe Duncan asked about the potential problem. My question was, when you, you came over, I'm sure there's a, a meaning of, uh, of passing the baton, shall we say, uh, of perhaps things that you are watching out for, things that are really concerning to the police department for the town of Scarborough. Can you share that with us? Thank you. Well, thanks. I, anytime uh, I notice someone's taking notes, I, <laughs> I'm prepared for those, those good questions. So, um, I should have written them down. Um, no, I, I should be able to remember them all. So as far as the uh, the mail theft, um, you know, I, let me go back and I'll, I'll check with our detectives. I think there was something that was put out initially uh, prior to me arriving and it may be time to update uh, if, if, you know, that in fact did go out, um, you know, and we have to, we have to obviously be careful about um, the integrity of the investigation as well. Um, but I do agree that, you know, um, our citizens have a right to know, um, you know, you know, different things about how they should, you know, submit their mail and, and that would take a lot of pressure off of our detectives as well. Um, so let me, let me get with our detective bureau and, and see, uh, if we can, uh, provide an update to the public, um, reverse 911, I'll be honest, I, I, I don't know, I would, uh, need to uh, speak with our uh, dispatch supervisor, Joe Thornton, and um, see what we have in place at this point. Um, uh, you know, if, if we're looking to use that capability uh, here in Scarborough. Um, and your third question, sir. <laughs> oh, well, actually, yeah. Oh, the, yeah, com the conversations about the, yes. So before I took the job, um, before I even applied for the job, I, I sat down with Chief Moulton for almost four hours. Um, and I could have spoke with, with him for another four hours beyond that. Um, just a very uh, interesting guy to speak to. And any time that, you know, uh, as a police administrator, you have a chance to sit down with somebody uh, who has been successful like him over the course of 22 years as chief and 44 years in town here. Um, you know, I, I would be... Uh, I'd be a fool not to take care, uh, take advantage of that opportunity. And I, I certainly did. Um, and, you know, I, I did have uh, some pointed questions for the chief. Uh, I think I had seven or eight questions listed down in my notebook that day. And uh, he was able to uh, elaborate on, on several of those in depth and provide me with uh, a pretty good outlook as, <clears throat> as far as, you know, what I was walking into and um, some of the things that they've been successful with and some of the things that we needed some work on. And, um, you know, one of the, one of the things that you know, I, I saw not only in that conversation, but in my time here as well in the last couple of months is, you know, we, the opioid crisis continues to, to um, be thriving in our state and Scarborough PD um, has done a great job along with uh, the Portland Recovery Center uh, over the last, you know, several years uh, with our, our various stakeholders with Operation Hope. And uh, we continue to lead from the front with that and, and try to do as much as we can as a small entity to uh, try to curb um, and be proactive about um, saving people's lives and getting them the treatment that they need. So uh, we look, look to uh, continue on with that uh, for the next uh, 
for the next year of funding. Uh, we're going to reapply for that funding uh, here in the coming days and uh, be able to secure that funding from the state to continue on in that very important uh, aspect of, of policing. Um, because it, it helps uh, not only our community, but it helps people from around the state. We have people from all 16 counties coming to Scarborough, Maine, um, because they are so desperate uh, in need of treatment. Um, so I think our goal eventually is to evolve into something that's a more formalized, either regional or statewide, statewide effort, so that we can impact um, a lot more people in our in our great state and uh, make sure that those treatment options are, are there and, and they're ready and accessible for uh, those people that are in, in desperate need of help. Um, I do have concerns about uh, the influx of traffic and as uh, was indicated on our community survey, um, traffic enforcement was uh, a place where we could uh, look to improve as an agency. Um, and I think that not only comes with, uh, you know, having the amount of personnel needed uh, to not only sustain calls for service, but also do proactive um, police work. But we also look at traffic design, how are our roads set up uh, to take care of the influx of traffic um, in our community. Um, as you all know, going up and down Route 1, it's, it's a pretty busy corridor and um, Payne Road is, is very busy as well. So uh, we need to take a look at that, um, possibly from a, a road design um, aspect and, and see what we can do there. So those survey results are, are telling. I think, um, you know, having visibility of our police officers uh, in our residential neighborhoods, as well as uh, by our, our, our businesses, especially in the Payne Road corridor, is important. That's one of the reasons why in the last couple of weeks, uh, we decided to go with the, uh, the cruise lights. Uh, if you've been following us on social media and, and uh, throughout the news agencies that uh, chose to run with it. Um, we're going with the cruise lights, which uh, was an idea that was uh, brought to our attention by one of our sergeants uh, who had um, seen it done in other jurisdictions and it's been successful. And, but it also ties back into what those survey uh, results uh, yielded for us. And, um, you know, people wanna see us in and around their neighborhoods and low visibility times and times when, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, if they see, you know, blue lights on either side of a light bar uh, lit in a consistent manner uh, going through their neighborhood or down through a parking lot in a business, um, especially in that Payne Road corridor, um, that could be comforting and it could also prevent any type of uh, crime that might be, um, that might be brewing in a parking lot or getting ready to uh, happen inside of a, inside of a business. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Janine has the next question for you. Yes, Mark, Chief, this is not a question. It's a thank you. I just wanted to thank you from the Durant family, from the beautiful ceremony that the Scarborough police put on recently at Memorial Park for my late husband, who lost his life volunteering for the Scarborough police. It was a beautiful ceremony. Thank you for your kind words, for the honor guard, for the beautiful bagpipes, for the whole ceremony. And I just want to thank you. And you had not been with the Scarborough police that, I think probably just a few days or maybe a week or so, and you took the time to set up that ceremony and, and attend. And I just wanted to thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And, and ma'am, we, we thank you for your, your husband's service to our community. and. Um, for his sacrifice and obviously yours, uh, your service to us uh, is important and we look to continue uh, honoring him and as well as your family uh, every December 15th, so. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to invite any additional questions. Um, Thank you very much. This is rather mundane, but I've been wanting to ask the Scarborough Police Department and this is a good opportunity. I'm a senior lady who um, prior to COVID enjoyed traveling quite a bit and friends from around here from other communities also told me that when they were away or you know if we happened to go abroad basically there might not be anyone in the house say here in Scarborough obviously is where I live for a couple of weeks they regularly were encouraged to let their police 
department. No, it kind of ties into what you were saying, Chief, and I appreciate it, uh, visibility. And I simply didn't know whether um, that was something that was recommended by the Scarborough Police Department or not. Yes, you could certainly call um, our dispatch center and, and request a property check, and we'd be happy to help out uh, as time allows, you know, between calls for service to swing by and, and make a presence known or check on a property. It depends on what the property owner wants. Um, but yeah, certainly uh, feel free to, to give us a call and we'd be happy to help out. Thank you. You're welcome. And the next question is from Kelly. Hi, Chief. Um, welcome. I've heard amazing things about you. We're lucky to have you. So thank you. Um, like others have, have also wished. Um, I wanted to just um, get a pulse check on, uh, we appreciate our SROs. Um, I have two boys that are nine and almost 12. Um, we are Leo family. So um, law enforcement is near and dear to our hearts. And both boys want to grow up to be a police officer as of now and a professional football player for the other one. And um, so um, there is the presence of the SROs right now in the schools. And then at the high school level, I believe, is when the Explorer program kind of kicks in. And it's not so much of a question or maybe it's just a plug in, but um, it would be amazing to have programs to bring law enforcement and kids in like the grade school and middle school level um, I know that the club that normally takes place in middle school didn't take place, but that, I blame that on COVID. Um, COVID kind of debauched a lot of things. Um, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud. I'd I love to see anything that brings kids um, as they grow closer and closer to law enforcement. Thanks, Kelly, for, for bringing that up. And I appreciate your, your comments and, and feedback. Um, that also is one of the things that was identified in our community service, uh, in our community survey, was to have more um, educational outreach. And uh, from what you describe, uh, that's something that we certainly can can uh, improve on with our SROs. They do an amazing job. Uh, we also have a community resource team uh, with Officer Greenleaf uh, working with the, the little ones and the Dare program, and and um, you know. Sergeant Thibodeau, who oversees um, both Officer uh, Plourd and Officer Pellerin uh, in our schools. So uh, they do an amazing job. And, and I just want to say that, you know, Scarborough, um, you're, you're blessed to have two SROs. And, and Officer Greenleaf is, um, he's our utility hitter, really. He, he does a lot of things um, in that community resource role of his. Um, you know, so if we could get a third SRO possibly um, for another school, that would that would be a goal of mine uh, to be able to satisfy that that need for more educational outreach. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely a priority with me, um, making sure that our police department, our officers are uh, starting with um, our younger grades and, and making sure that um, if there are any barriers that exist between um, those young kids and our police officers that we eliminate those, whether it be uh, through perceptions that kids get from their parents or wherever they may uh, get their, their influence from. Uh, we want to try to knock down those barriers um, early and often and not only knock down the barriers, but teach them how to be um, better role models, better citizens, better, you know, as they grow older, better mentors to not only their brothers and sisters, but to, you know, uh, people that they might influence, whether they join police explorers or they join scouts or whatever group they might get involved with. And I think the police department has a very important role in that. Um, if we're not doing it as, as public servants, then who will? Uh, the, the teachers and the staff, they have their hands full, uh, just trying to get the, uh, you know, the curriculum out and especially during this, this time of COVID, uh, it's a very unpredictable um, job and role that they have in our school systems. And that's where I, I think our police officers can, can help out uh, as, as you know, providing a service, not only to our students, but also the staff that can serve in those schools as well. 
Thank you. That sounds amazing. And if you ever need a volunteer. Okay. Give us a call. Plenty. We'll yeah. put you to work. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying it for years. Put me to work. All right. Thank you very much, Kelly. It looks like um, Judy has a has another question. What is an SRO? Is that Scarborough Resource Officer or what does that mean? Yeah, uh, great question. You know, I should know better with my acronyms that I should explain things. Um, SRO is a school resource officer. So you are very close um, <laughs> school resource officer. And we're, we're so happy to have um, two SROs, two school resource officers here in town that uh, do an amazing job. And, um, you know, I, I met with the superintendent uh, an assistant superintendent when I first uh, took this job here in Scarborough and uh, they were very supportive of the uh, work that the, both of those officers are doing and as a new chief coming in uh, knowing that I have two seasoned uh, SROs uh, dealing with our youth um, that, that meant a lot to me so so yeah that's SRO that's the nature of that position. I, I was going to ask you earlier about opioid um, epidemic and how it may have touched here, but um, if it's not that, what is the most prevalent crime in Scarborough, would you say, statistically? Yeah, I, I think uh, we see uh, an influx of uh, thefts uh, in the Payne Road corridor um, before I you know, took over as chief, um, you know, I was getting information um, through our leadership here, um, just the weekly reports. And I, I saw a lot of uh, petty thefts that were coming in and out of our businesses, shoplifting and, and what have you. Um, so I, you know, I think that's, uh, it's seemed to simmer down a little bit as of right now, but uh, it comes and goes. Um, you know, we do see some uh, assault activities. Unfortunately, domestics uh, are still prevalent in, in our society and within our community. Um, so uh, that's, that's, that's something that, um, you know, we see on a routine basis. And thankfully, knock on wood, uh, we don't see um, crimes of violence um, that some other cities in, uh, around our nation see. Um, so we're fortunate here to live in a, in a safe community. And that, uh, I think, uh, has to do a lot with the support that we get from the community. Uh, when they see something that might seem, uh, out of place, they, they report it and we try to get out there as soon as we can to take care of the, the problem. Well, just one last question in terms of, you know, this has been very helpful. Are there plans for continuing? communication with the community? Yes, um, you know, our, we have a, a community resource uh, team uh, led by Sergeant Steve Thibodeau, who does a great job um, with his team, as well as uh, through social media um, to update the, the public on different initiatives that he has going on. We have a special enforcement team that um, from time to time when they're working on special projects that require their attention, they'll update uh, through um, Facebook and Instagram and, and through Allison Carrier as well, uh, through our uh, communications uh, through the town. So um, along with our media partners that uh, routinely will check in with, with me or uh, with members of, of our team here uh, yeah. to get feedback on uh, different things that might be happening in, in town. So it is our intent, it is my intent to be uh, transparent as well as uh, uh, communicate well with the public, uh, whether it be at events in town where, where I, I uh, get an invite or I, I show up without an invite, um, just to, to mingle with, with the community members, but also those times when we get phone calls from the public. Um, you know, uh, we work hard here to be uh, transparent and to, to be public servants uh, to you all. Um, and a huge part of that is a communication piece. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Next uh, with the question is Sylvia. Hi, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Yes. I, see, I see palm trees on your wall and that looks great. <laughs> 
Well, I have to confess, we're wintering a bit in Florida, oh, but we are real Mason and Scarborough <laughs> residents. Right. Uh, actually, I live right off the uh, Eastern Road, which is a part of the Eastern Trail. And soon, when the gap is closed, it, it's already heavily traveled by bikers and walkers and kids on their new scooter things. And it really worries me how fast the traffic tends to go on there and how a lot of people don't understand the dotted line um, that we have. And I've actually emailed the town a couple of times to consider speed shelves, not the short speed bumps, but the speed shelves for people going 25. I just, I'm really worried that as traffic, foot, foot and bicycle and kid traffic increases within the next year, that there might be an accident. And I would really like to see something that kind of makes people go slower. Yeah. So I just thought I'd bring that up and you can put it right. in the back of your head uh, right. as you um, right. continue on with your many, many, many other things to think about. And uh, Sylvia, I enjoy going down your road uh, from time to time on my bike and getting all the way to the end of the trail and wondering when that portion of the trail is going to be completed. I love the Eastern Trail and um, whether it's running or biking. Um, and I understand, I, you know, I usually when I go, it's quite early in the morning. So there aren't a lot of people out, but uh, I've been out there midday and it's uh, on the trail itself. It's, it's very um, congested at times especially on our nicer days. And then once you hit the Eastern road, um, depending on the time of day, I understand where you're coming from. Word, word is that by the end of this year, it should be finished. But of course, that they've been saying that over and over. But I think it's going out to bid this year. So it's going to happen and you'll be able to go all the way to Portland on your bike without going on road. Oh, so, going on Highland Ave, yeah, 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 so, Highland Ave. Yeah, how we do it now. Thank yeah. you so much, and I'm so happy to welcome you to Scarborough, even though I'm not currently exactly there. Well, thank you. What what was it? Is the temperature down there anyway? Just so we all know. <laughs> oh, we just had a cold snap and got down into um, around 40. Okay. Yeah, and now <laughs> it's a high. <laughs> It's low 70s. <laughs> That's a cold. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, Sam, what, what was the uh, temperature today? I, I didn't get outside, but it was quite cold uh, this morning coming in. Oh, he's on mute. Thank you. Oh. It, it was in the single digits. Single oh. digits, yeah. <laughs> so, Sylvia, you're, you're missing it. And, and next... Our library director, Nancy Kroll, would like to make a comment. I want to welcome Mark officially within this group. Um, we're very fortunate to have him as part of the team. And I will uh, reinforce what Mark said about the, I should say the chief. <laughs> oh, it's okay. You can call me Mark. <laughs> what the chief has said about the, the departments working together in this community. It, it truly is extraordinary and it's a, a real team effort. But I wanted to speak to the outreach that the police uh, department does do and it's been mentioned several ways here today but I, from a library perspective, I wanted to mention how much we appreciate police officers stopping in after school and just mingling with the kids saying hi, sitting down occasionally and just really talking. We've, we've had times when they've had an, enough uh, opportunity to sit and, and just draw with the kids. It's really special and it uh, just provides that personal connection with the kids outside of their school day and real, real human beings talking to real human beings. So it's really special for us. I also want to put a plug in for the great cooks that come out of the police department. Um, the police department is often behind the, the cooking at, uh, we've got a chili and chowder event coming up with Project Grace, the uh, community dinner at Thanksgiving time. Uh, so the officers are multi-talented. We're very lucky. So um, we appreciate them in so many more ways than keeping us safe. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. And I'm glad that I didn't have a, a cooking test prior to taking this job because I, I would not be here, that's for sure. <laughs> 
I do what I can to get by. So, yeah. Chief Wynn has one more question for you. Hi, yes, just a quick one. Uh, you mentioned that a lot of outreach and communications are done on Facebook and Instagram and so on. Uh, I don't do any of those. Uh, I, I have a certain preference in, in, in my privacy and Facebook is not one of them. Um, is there any other platform that I can sign up to? I, I, I don't mind getting text messages. I don't mind getting emails. Would that be still a possibility? Yes, uh, actually, when if if you uh, if you still have your notebook in front of you, if okay. you can just do you still have it? Yeah. If you can uh, just take down my number okay. um, to the police department here. It's seven three zero four three nine nine. If you give that number a call and just leave me a voicemail uh, with your contact information. Uh, I'll answer your questions that you had. I'll, I'll, I'll follow, follow up with our folks and uh, get some better feedback for you and, and then uh, share email addresses with you as well. Thank okay. you very much. All right. You're welcome, sir. Chief Holmquist, thank you so much for, for answering um, so many questions. Uh, you've you've been talking now for the better part of an hour, which is really wonderful. We we weren't quite sure how many questions folks would have, and there there have been several. Um, Sam, I I don't know if you would like to say a few more words before we close. I just wanted to say uh, a bunch of thank yous. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the library staff, uh, Nancy Crowell. Uh, Lucy Noel and the whole staff. I mean, they are wonderful to work with, and uh, you know, they are a real asset to the town of Scarborough. There's no doubt about that. And I want to thank you very much, Chief Comquist, for uh, sitting here for an hour with this group. And uh, I forgot to mention one thing here that is in your resume, and that's that you've done seven marathons. Okay, <laughs> you're pretty impressive. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Well, we want to welcome you, uh, you know, to the town of Scarborough. Thank you very much to the library. Thank you very much, Chief. And thank you very much for all the participants. And uh, let's have a good night. All right. Thanks for having me, uh, Sam and, and Lucy. Thanks again for, for all your help uh, getting this organized and helping us get our message out uh, to the citizens here. And thank you to all of our uh, citizens who, who joined us tonight. And uh, again, if there's anything that we can do here to, to better serve you um, here at Scarborough PD, uh, please give us a call and reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you everybody. very much. Bye. Take care. Good night.